Okay, at this time I'm honored to introduce our next speaker, uh, Coleman Fung. Uh, I have to say that Coleman is a lot of the inspiration behind really getting us uh, to this stage. You, you know, as Jitendra says, all the ad advisory boards of the college have been saying for the last 10 years, please do this professional master's. But Coleman uh, came along and said, let's do it. And so that's why we are here. And he created an institute. He founded the Coleman Fung Institute for Engineering Leadership, which will be the home for these professional programs. So I just want to tell you a little bit about Coleman. Coleman uh, was a native of uh, Hong Kong and graduated from Berkeley in 1987 with a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering and Operations Research. He also holds a master's degree in Management Science and Engineering from Stanford. Coleman is really passionate about Berkeley. He came here as a student because he admired Berkeley's culture of activism and engagement in world issues. He credits Berkeley with encouraging him to question conventional wisdom, to think critically, and to integrate what's learned in the classrooms with the drive to make an impact on important problems. These experiences led him to start his company, OpenLink Financial, in 1992. Already as a young securities trader on Wall Street, he saw how poorly the back-end trading functions were being managed. And he thought there has got to be a better way. He drew from his engineering background to develop software that integrated these functions into a more seamless, robust fashion, and he rounded up the capital to launch OpenLink. The company develops products to support financial markets, risk management, and energy markets. And really, you know, how do you trade for energy is certainly one of the big questions of our time. And he has been extremely successful in OpenLink Financial. We are really delighted, by the way, that Coleman first set us off to this, has brought us here to this point. But also really thrilled that he's come here today to share his perspectives from us. And let me now invite him to the podium to make some remarks. Coleman. Thank you so much, Dean uh, Shastri. That was a very uh, generous remark. It's actually kind of funny to hear someone talk about you. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Good to see you guys again. Um, what I'd like to do today, actually, I'm going to give you your second assignment. Uh, seriously, it's actually going to be tough especially for engineers. And it may take you some time to actually get it done. So let's get started with some background information. So as Shanker mentioned, I, I actually started out as a Wall Street character, you know, learning how to trade, learning how to model, and all that good and bad stuff. Um, and then I started open lane. So with, initially with five people, and then eventually at this point we are over 1,000 people. So I can pretty much tell you I have worked, I have met and worked with a lot of different characters. And so here's some interesting observation I'd like to share with you as the background information. Uh, let's focus on the technical guy since we're all technical uh, people here. So I want you to think of two group of people. Let's just call them group A and group B. Um, at the service, Actually, these two groups of people are very much similar. Assume they graduated from top universities or you know, top engineering school, and they all have really promising initial career path. And then let's fast forward, say, five years. Now, the difference will show up between these two groups. The first group, group A, you're going to see people who are really making very interesting transition Either they already become sort of leaders in whatever they do, innovator or entrepreneur, or they're really in the emerging area to become such. And people in group B, they're not doing that badly, but somehow they are stuck in what I call mid-level type of jobs. They may not be very interesting, but yet, I mean, they're making a decent living. And at the same time, you say, well, given the background, why are they not doing more? So that's the scenario I want you to think about. So here's the first sort of observation called communism one. Within the group A, 
people from that group tend to have a very so strong sense of self, or actually more accurately, a very strong sense of gestalt. The German word for an integrated self that's really unique and cannot be defined by the sum of its parts. So don't worry, I'm not a psychology guy. In fact, I've never taken any psychology classes. So what does that mean? The sum of its parts. So we are all very different. We have different abilities, different skills, different intuition, different interpretations, and other interesting attributes. That's our part. How do you get to the point where you have that transformation in such a way that you can stop? It's actually very different. Now, it is actually nothing new. If you pay attention to some of the interesting research in early childhood development, there's a lot of interesting work being done. But they all focus on little kids, how the stimulation, how the environment is going to help them think and really make that connection, the neural connection. So my argument, my, my ism one, is that there's actually a later stage of that development. And that given what I observe, even though it's a, not a large sample, but I do see the difference between people, to me, with very similar skill set, very similar intelligence. In fact, I would argue that some of the people in group B are so much more intelligent and good at certain things that I would be scratching my head. I work with some of these guys in my company or I, I struggle with some of these guys as my customers, and yet they can't cross that line. So that's the background information. So, ism number two, another observation. How do you, so if you believe my first observation, that such transformation is possible, how can you get there? So go back to the group number two. Not only they don't have that sense of gestalt, they are actually very tough on themselves. They're usually tough, very critical, and they're full of noise. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's OK. That's why we have this discussion. The key here is that you can't force yourself because they are always trying to say, why am I not getting the next big idea? And what am I supposed to do? Instead of just be, just do what you're good at. So you can force that gestalt moment, but you can actually create an ideal condition so what is that ideal condition? It comes in two parts. Part one is you, the nature part. You are who you are. You need to be authentic. You need to be honest with yourself and open. Don't force. Don't always push yourself to, to be someone or something you're not. Part two is the environment, the nurture part. If you are in a, what I call very conducive, stimulating environment, uh, that will help you fuse what you're good at and what the environment is challenging you. So here's your assignment. You're about to start an amazing journey that I would consider very conducive, very stimulating. Are you ready? So your assignment is how do you really prepare yourself? I'm sure you're all very prepared. But I want you to go beyond the check the box preparation. I want you to prepare yourself. Be authentic, be honest, and above all, be kind and sensitive to yourself. Don't beat yourself up all the time because we all do enough of that. The wonderful distinguished professor will be challenging you at every turn. 
and you're going to be given assignment capstone project, it's going to be a lot of pressure. So the last thing you need to do is that you're going to beat yourself up. So I want you to try to accomplish that. Then your gestalt moment will come when you least expect it. So I was actually very fortunate. I had my moment back in when I was about 28. And all of a sudden I realized, you know, I'm actually really good at observing and studying complex systems. And I can really look past a lot of the complexity and extract whatever inner or elemental beauties underneath. And I'm good at designing. And until then, I mean, I was good. I was going to... Doing trading is not the most exciting. I mean, yes, you move money around. You make a lot of money for doing really little work. But it just wasn't satisfying. So by the time I realized this is what I was good at, I said, you know what? I'm going to have to start my own company. So the, the story behind this is that you don't have to worry about your vision and all that stuff. If you have your gestalt moment, everything else will come very easily and naturally. So I want you guys to sort of take a different approach. You are always very aggressive, type A, you know, obsessive, compulsive, and trying to get everything done as much as possible. That's great. That's prepare you. That's why you're here. Now, I, I want you to take a slightly different approach to give yourself a little bit more caring internally up there because that will actually launch you much further along. So as uh, Shanka said, I started out in the financial market. Um, by the time the energy market uh, started the, the deregulation process, my company was actually still very small, only about, we only had about 18 people. And I knew absolutely nothing about the energy market. But I say, hey, what the heck? This is great. I'm going to do this. I'm going to invest whatever I have into the energy market. And so at this point, if you do any you know, website, visit our website or do any Google search, OpenLink is like by far the industry standard. Uh, you can see all the award we won in the energy market. So that's an example of what that gestalt moment will bring. It will kind of supercharge you. It's only, almost like giving you superpower that you don't care. You're just going to do it. And you, you can tap into it. You can overcome whatever obstacle. So imagine me when I was a bit younger trying to sell my product, my idea to the cowboys in Houston. So a Chinese-American kid from New York trying to tell them how they should manage the energy risk. So if I worry about that, I, I think I would never do it. <laughs> but I didn't care. I believe in, hey, I can solve any problem. I can look at any complex system. And I can come up with great solutions. And I'm going to convince this guy, even though not all of them initially bought my idea. So I, uh, another sort of really funny example, Shell, it was one of my early customers. They bought our solution for just the gas business. And it was always my objective to you know, get to the oil business, which is really much larger. But guess what? It took another 10 years to get from Shell gas into the entire Shell oil globally. It took us 10 years. And that's what you have to do. And in order to do that, you need that endurance. You need to have that gestalt moment that can carry you. It's not like once you have that moment, it doesn't mean you stop. You actually become so focused and so driven, you're going to continue to learn. And it's like a snowball effect. You just do it. You, you, you don't stop. The only thing you need to be aware of, just don't develop a big ego along with that. So that way you can really excel in what you do and have much bigger impact and make a better world, really. So, relax. Focus on what I'm asking you to do. 
And don't say, okay, when am I going to have my moment? Don't do that. Just be, and your moment will come. And I hope to see you all in September. Thank you.